Okay, so we're going to look at our second example, uh, confidence intervals of the mean. Um, in this example, the mean length of 12 newly hatched iguanas is 7.00 inches with a standard deviation of 0 0.75 inches. Construct and interpret a 90% confidence interval of the mean length of all newly hatched iguanas. Assume the lengths of all newly hatched iguanas are normally distributed. And a follow-up question, do the results support the claim that the mean length of newly hatched iguanas is greater than 6.5 inches? So in this problem, what we're looking at is whether or not we know, so we're looking for the confidence interval of the mean. So that's the first thing that we notice, confidence interval of the mean, because we're gonna need to distinguish between, do we have a confidence interval of the mean, which is what we're looking at right now, or is it a confidence interval of the proportion, which is what we're gonna look at next, or is it a uh, confidence interval of the standard deviation? So this is a confidence interval of the mean. And once we identify that, we're gonna to wanna to determine whether or not we know the population standard deviation or not. So let's look at what's given. Um, we're given that N is 12. So we have 12 newly hatched iguanas. And then it tells us the mean length of those 12, so that's our X bar sample mean, 7.00 inches. And again, it says with a standard deviation of 0 0.75 inches. So this is talking about these 12 iguanas. So that standard deviation is not the population standard deviation. That is the standard deviation just of this sample. In other words, the sample standard deviation. Um, again, if, if it were the population standard deviation, it would have to say there with a population standard deviation of 0 0.75 inches, but it doesn't. It just says with a standard deviation, so it's referring back to these 12 in our sample. Okay, then we're constructing a 90% confidence interval of the mean, so that helps us find our alpha. Alpha is one minus that value, or 10%. Just like the last problem, we're looking here for the 90% confidence interval of the mean, but in this case, sigma is not known or is unknown. Um, again, we have three representations of that confidence interval. Can use the plus or minus notation, the interval notation, or the inequality notation. Um, and just to kind of note, you know, we should generally check that those assumptions that our data is simple, simply random. So this, we can assume that we have 12 hatched iguanas. They weren't some kind of special iguanas. So we'll assume that it's a simple random sample. And even though that number of iguanas, 12 is less than 30, um, it tells us up here that the lengths of all newly hatched iguanas are normally distributed. So because that original distribution is normally distributed, that n does not need to be bigger than 30. And again, those examples are, those assumptions are just needed so that we can continue the work of constructing this confidence interval, meaning that the next page is true, that when we go to find our error, we can use Excel to find it. So when sigma is not known, we don't use confidence.norm. We use something similar. It's the student t distribution instead. So we're gonna use confidence.t in Excel. And then the values that we're plugging in, again, are alpha. And this time, not the population standard deviation, but the sample standard deviation, s. And again, the sample size, n. So when I go to Excel, what I'm gonna type in is confidence.t 0.10 for the 10%, which is one minus the 90%, and the 0 0.75 for the sample standard deviation and 12 for the sample size. So we're gonna open up Excel and type in here equals confidence. I can just start typing it and I should have my options. There's confidence.norm. There's confidence.t, click on it. Again, we'll notice the first thing it wants is alpha, 0 0.10. The next thing it wants is the standard deviation. Uh, the sam in this case, it's the sample standard deviation, 0 0.75. And then the next thing it wants is the sample size. In this case, 12. Tab out of there. And that's 0 0.388838208469. 
Um, I made a slight error in the previous video. We generally would want to round our statistics to one more decimal place than our data. In this problem, we don't have raw data. We actually have statistics. So we would actually round to the same number of decimal places. So in this case, 0. Point would be two decimal places, 3, 9. So I think I misstated that in the previous video, but here I want to round to the hundredths because my statistics x bar is also to the hundredths. If we were given raw data to begin with, which we could have in this problem been given that instead, um, we would have used that data to find the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Those we would have rounded to one more decimal place in the data, and then our error, we would use the same value, the same number of decimal places. Okay, so moving on, have our error is 0.39. And now we have these three different ways of listing the confidence interval. So our, our x bar is 7.00, so x bar plus or minus the error. 7.00 plus or minus 0 0.39 inches. Or I can write it as an interval, x bar minus e up to x bar plus e. 7 minus 0 0.39 is 6.61. 7 plus 0 0.39 is 7.39. So 6.61 inches up to 7.39 inches. Or if I use the interval notation, it sandwiches the population mean mu between those two values. In this case, mu is in between 6.61 inches and 7.39 inches. So really, you know, once you find the error, you're then using this formula, one of these three formulas that are really the same, but just through different representations of taking the x bar minus the error and the x bar plus the error. And then we'll interpret our results. So we interpret these results by saying we are 90% confident that the mean length of newly hatched iguanas is between <clears throat> 6.61 and 7.39 inches. Um, what that 90% confidence means is that if I were to repeat this process 100 times, we would have 100 different, slightly different confidence intervals because each time you repeat the process, you would have a slightly different sample mean. So the center would be slightly different. We'd get 100 different confidence intervals. And in 90 of them, the actual population lean, mean would lie. In 10 of them, it would not. OK, got that back. So now, do the results support the claim that the mean length of a newly hatched iguana is greater than 6.5 inches? Um, <clears throat> so our confidence interval tells us that we're 90% confident the mean is between 6.61 and 7.39. Because all these values are bigger than the 6.5 inches, then yes, the results do support the claim that the mean length is greater than 6.5 inches because all the values in the entire confidence interval are greater than this. And <clears throat> finally, I'm just recapping this problem. So we looked at the given values of n and x bar, and then the fact that the <clears throat> population standard deviation is not given in this problem, but instead we're given the sample standard deviation. What that does is tell us that we're using the student t distribution, or confidence.t, as opposed to confidence.norm, um, when we go to find our error. So, Everything kind of works the same. We find our error, and then we have these three ways to represent confidence interval and interpreting the confidence interval in our sentence at the bottom. OK, so there's a, a third example where we are actually given raw data. And I'll look at that one next.